Okay, so this is a steamed pork, or actually a baked pork bun uh, from the cheapest Michelin star restaurant in the world. Not bad. Hong Kong. Now here's an interesting city. Only about an hour away from mainland China, but in an entirely different world in terms of people, food, and culture. By all definition, it's a modern city, but it also has some amazing open markets and street food that you can't find anywhere else. This is a list to help you get the most out of the city of Hong Kong. Number one is the Appleyu Flea Market in Kowloon. It's written up as an electronics market, but you can find everything from fly fishing gear to used construction tools. The coolest thing about this market, besides the fact that it's almost entirely locals, is that it stays up and running well past dark. Okay, so that was the electronics market on Apple. Yeah, yeah. So most people will tell you to go to Mongkok uh, Street Market, but that one is kind of geared more towards tourists. Um, I would highly recommend going to this one instead because it's the same size and it's a lot cheaper. Real quick, the best way to get around the city is by metro. I picked up an octopus card, which are refillable and a must if you're going to be there for more than three days. It does get a little bit packed during rush hour though. <laughs> Long Kwai Fung, or LKF as the locals call it, is a nightlife district also on the Kowloon side of the city. Now I was actually in Hong Kong for Chinese New Year, so I'm not sure it's always like this, but when I was there, it was off the hook. Some cool places to check out are Senses 99 and Anthony's Ranch for local live music. Next up we have the Yuen Po Bird Street, right by the Mong Kok Outdoor Market. Birds are the most popular pet in Hong Kong, and believe it or not, this is the street where they come to walk them. Did I read that right? Walk? But anyway, this is one of the more peaceful spots of the city and is a great place to come to get away from all the noise. Or maybe to pet a parrot. Now you're probably thinking, how interesting can a flower market be? The answer is so interesting that they named the actual street after it. If you've ever wanted to wander around for an hour trying to pronounce various flowers in Cantonese, then this is the market for you. But seriously, Flower Market Road is a fantastic place to spend an hour or two, and unique to Hong Kong. I recommend trying to plan your trip around Chinese New Year, because that's when the market really takes off. Number 5, Lama Island my personal favorite of the list. Lama Island is off the coast, only about 15 minutes by ferry, that has two tiny fishing villages on it that have been there for thousands of years. The total population of the island is under 6,000. So I was on Lama Island uh, three years ago, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what's changed uh, since then. You get dropped off at Yungsho Wan, which is the biggest village of the island. Most of the shops and restaurants here, while good, are geared a bit more towards tourists. So if you want something cheap, you'll have to wait to get at the second village. So cool one. Forgive my pronunciation. <laughs> Last time they didn't have a great and I totally touched it. <laughs> Past the beach, there's a single path that takes you to the rest of the island, and I recommend renting a bike because it allows you to cover more ground. It takes about two hours for the full loop, so be prepared to spend most of your day here. Okay, so I got the bike. Uh, it looks pretty solid except for the fact that there's no front brake. Um, so that means that this next downhill section is going to be... it's going to be a little sketchy. I'm going to put the camera away because uh, as easy as it looks, it's actually very difficult to ride and hold the camera at the same time. So. Yeah, if I see at the bottom, that means I haven't crashed. Yeah.
Okay, so I just found out that this path actually isn't a circle. It's just a straight line and it ends. <laughs> Thought it was a circle, so now I'm kind of rushing back. Uh, hopefully I don't miss the ferry. I'm about halfway up the mountain now, um, and I just realized I forgot my SD card to my camera. And I have extras, but they decided and also not to be my bag. And when I say they decided, I mean that I didn't put them there. So, yeah, also I'm going up the uh, water slash slope maintenance uh, area. Um, so yeah, I don't know, Some, something's gonna happen, probably. Victoria's Peak is one of the most visited destinations in Hong Kong, but I've got a couple of tips for avoiding the crowds. First, I recommend hiking at least one way up or down the mountain. The hike up is a little steep, I'll admit, but it's only about an hour and a half from the starting point, which is Old Peak Road, right next to the zoo and botanical gardens. Alternatively, you can take the tram, which is only about four US dollars, but then you have to deal with all the other tourists. The Central Park in Hong Kong cost a whopping 51 million US dollars to create. It's a pretty stunning place as far as parks go. If you head over at sunset, you can get some pretty amazing views of the city. And also the later you go, the less crowded it gets. My favorite thing to do in the park though is actually to watch the old guys play checkers. As you can tell, they take it a bit more seriously than we do. Hong Kong is famous for dim sum, but finding good local dim sum is surprisingly difficult. Some notable places to try are Tim Ho Wan's, which I think is a little overrated, but still the cheapest Michelin star restaurant in the world, Dim Dim Sum in Wan Chai, and a place called Dim Sum The Art of Chinese Tidbits, which I thought was the best despite the name. Terrible. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Interesting color choice. <laughs> hey, we're, who, are, who are we to judge though, right? <laughs> so right now I'm headed to a professional tailor uh, because Hong Kong is one of the cheapest cities in the world that you can get a high quality uh, professionally tailored shirt. And also I've never had one before. And I want to see what I'm missing out on. <laughs> Should be interesting. The place I went to was called Wing Guide in Causeway Bay. There's a line just to get into the building. <laughs> if you end up going, ask for Eddie yeah, and tell him yeah, Cal yeah, McKinley yeah. sent nice you. Nice He'll hook you up. <laughs> One of the benefits to having a tailored shirt, besides being able to customize everything about it, is that it's a lifelong relationship. Meaning once you get measured, you can send them details about any shirt you want, and they can have it made. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. That's not from this trip, that's from a trip I took three years ago. What happened to all my footage of the Big Buddha? Oh that's right, it was closed for renovation. Well, I guess all I can tell you is to go see it for yourself. Okay. Ready for takeoff, or lift off, or whatever. I'm moving. Oh yeah, we're going places. Oh, not that place, that's bad.
Da. <laughs> yeah, this isn't bad. This is definitely the way to go. Hello. 